just restarted. And this has to go this way. Mm -mm. I'll try not to drop everything and make a loud noise, but I can't guarantee it. There. I'm charging. So I'm just here because I felt like going live. I might not read because um, I feel like it. Taking my shoe off. Um, I have a bit of a headache all of a sudden. I keep saying all of the sudden instead of all of a sudden. Um, it's hot out. I've been outside once just to get some air. I have my window open, but it's not the same as being outside. Um, I'd like to do some recording of audiobooks today, but it's kind of loud in this place because my landlord's here and there. They've been doing painting. Hello, Simply Sapphire, you were here last time. Um, they've been doing painting and working on the plumbing today and it's just like banging and stuff. And I'm like, I don't feel like having to deal with that while I record. I am incredibly thirsty. I'm supposed to drink more during chemotherapy. So I like Perrier. Do you like Perrier? Although, I am a grumpy old man, and I wish that it was in a glass bottle like it used to be. I see glass bottles of it, but it's only the um, original one, like with no flavor in it. And my favorite is lemon. Right now I have grapefruit, um, but I miss, it, it tastes, everything tastes better out of a glass bottle. Am I right or am I not wrong? I know a lot of people, I get annoyed by a lot of things that people do on videos, including drinking, but I have to, to stay alive. So there, <laughs> um, I've been drinking it since I was little. I remember my aunt Valerie drinking it. Sometimes I would sleep over at my aunt's place and she would watch, um, Knott's Landing and Falcon Crest. And she would always have a big bottle of Perrier. And I think that's where I started to drink it. I can't be bothered to wear a wig today. I can't hear. Yeah, you won't hear anything like right now, but every now and then there's like a loud bang or something. So, and it always seems to happen right when I hit record when I'm doing it. So, I mean, I might read a book. I mean, maybe I could read another Moonstone Castle chapter, but I don't know if I'll stand. You know, I'm almost out of water. I got to get a new um, filter for my water pitcher, my Brita pitcher. Just one. Oh, I was at the grocery store and looking at them and you can get like a generic brand one that is a lot cheaper than the actual Brita filter. So I'm going to get that one. And I got to go and get some vegetables. I got to eat fresh fruits and vegetables. Jeez. Last night for supper, I had souvlaki and I felt so good. I feel so good after I eat some meat. I need to eat more meat. And it's gone. Yep. Doesn't taste good out of the plastic. Thank you for saying that. The short hair looks really good. Everyone says that. And I'm very thankful that people will say that. And like, that's great. But personally, I don't like short hair on me. So it's fun to be able to have the wigs on. Yesterday morning, I put a, my ginger wig on and I felt all cute, but I was about to leave and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's just too hot. So I took it off. But I do feel cute with my long hair. And I don't know, I'm looking forward to it actually falling out. I had my first treatment it's three days ago now. I don't know. I'm losing track of time. Um, and it's supposed to start falling out the second or third week after you start. Um, my next treatment is on August 4th. So like, I, I don't know. It's hard to understand how everything works, but I'm actually looking forward to it falling out and seeing how it grows back 
and whatnot after it's done. Um, also at the hospital, I keep meaning to, like they have um, wigs that you can, free wigs there. I, I looked at them all online and I thought they were all ugly, but it might've been just the picture, you know, they took them on like creepy mannequin heads. Maybe if I actually saw them and picked one, cause I would like one that is um, maybe like right to about here. Both of the ones I have are pretty long. After putting on my ginger one yesterday, after having the blonde one on, the ginger one felt so much lighter because the blonde one is like, whoosh, that's a lot of hair. Um, yeah, so would you like to hear some reading? Because I like reading. I can go grab the book. I got to get some um, water in my big glass. Another water you could try is vitamin water. I'm not big on those. Um, I've, I don't remember all the brands. There's like one, it's always like about this big and it looks expensive. I, I don't want to spend a lot of money on water. Perrier used to be cheaper. Yes, I am a grumpy old man. I remember when I remember when I could buy a pack of cigarettes with a $5 bill. <laughs> I quit smoking in 2008, by the way. Okay, I'm going to get some more water and my book and we will attempt to read. <laughs> All right, so I've decided if I run out of water, I'm just going to stop. That's when I'll stop. If I run out of water here and have to go refill, that just means it's time for me to end my live video. Whoops, forgot the book. Come on, book. Get in my hand. I still have that dress hanging up there. I put that dress up there um, before I had my um, surgery because I thought I was going to be able to leave like on the same day and put on my dress and look amazing, which now I think is so funny, but it's still up there and I haven't worn it yet. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know about a bob. I'm, I'm very particular about hairstyles like I don't want a Karen cut you know like like one of those a-line bob things I do not want to look like I want to talk to the manager okay so this is where we are we're on chapter x11 which I believe is 12 um oh yeah I always forget what we've just read so the girls took a taxi to the motel. Where are they going? Oh, right. Chapter 11 was called the Tower Signaler. I don't remember everything that happened at the beginning, but at the end, Nancy went out on the balcony with her binoculars and she looked at the castle. I could find some what <laughs> Which Nancy drew though? Because she's been around since 1930. I'm kind of big on, uh, I, I like a lot of different Nancy hair eras um, up until the 80s. Then after that, I'm done with Nancy Drew. <laughs> um, okay, so at the end, she was looking at the castle, the Moonstone Castle through her binoculars and there was some dude on the roof looking back at her and then he started making weird hand gestures. The man put down his binoculars and began to make strange motions with his hands. Nancy watched him intently. She asked herself, has that man gone crazy? Or is he trying to sing? Is he trying to signal someone? End of chapter 11. Right. And somebody's about to show up in chapter 12. Somebody just made a comment earlier and guessed who it was and they guessed correctly. I mean, it's obvious kind of. Yep, this is gonna taste a lot better when I get a new filter. Because my immunity is lowered, I have to 
be more careful and stuff. I don't like being careful. Um, oh, also, there's a two page picture illustration in this chapter involving boats. So it's going to be a fun one. Shall we begin? 1020 something for the timestamp. Chapter 12, impending crash. Hi, sleuth, a male voice called. She lowered the binoculars and turned quickly. Can you hear the birds outside? Should I? I'm going to close this just a little. Sorry. She lowered the binoculars and turned quickly. Ned, she cried out. He kissed her, then asked how she was making out with her mystery case. For answer, Nancy handed him the binoculars and pointed toward the tower of the castle. See if you can figure out what that man is doing, she suggested. Oh, great. She's already got him doing some work. He kissed her. She gave him a, a task. Ned at the glasses. Finally, he said, frowning. With that long beard and unkempt hair, the fellow looks like some kind of a nut. I was right. He's Charles Manson in court doing his little dance. But actually, I think he's doing his own version of a wigwag. What is that? Maybe he's sending a message in code. Wigwag. That sounds like Indian, or excuse me, indigenous, Native American. A wig, like a wigwam. Nancy took the glasses again and watched the strange man. He continued the same motions for another, I don't know how to do the motion, for another half minute, then disappeared. Oh my goodness. I Ned better accompany the girls to the castle now because there's some weirdo Charles Manson type there. I guess he's gone inside the castle, she said. Ned took the binoculars. Suppose I watch to see, he, see if he comes outside the castle and if so, where he goes and what he does. Meanwhile, you bring me up to date on the news. Nancy told him about the missing Joni Horton and her suspicion that Mrs. Horton's servants were connected with the child's disappearance. She outlined Mr. Wheeler's part in settling the Horton estate, his disappearance from the hospital, Peter Judd's story, and the mysterious men who had followed her and George. I think I need a recap on all that too. One of them calls himself Mr. Seaman. So you suspect some great hoax was perpetrated 14 years ago, Nancy commented. I'd say this is a big order for us boys to deliver over a weekend, but we'll do our best. I love Ned and the Nedlings now. They used to annoy me all the time. they would be like, oh no, Ned is in this book. But now I love him. I feel sorry for him. He gave her a great big kiss and she was like, here, Find out what this guy's doing. Do my work for me. Though Ned and Nancy waited for some time, with the glasses trained on the castle, no one appeared either on the tower or the grounds. Ned grinned. I guess that strange fellow lives there, he said. Not too bad a place if you don't have to pay rent. He's probably the person who warned George and me away from the castle when we swam over to it, Nancy said. In that case, you girls shouldn't go there alone again. I agree. Nancy and Ned walked to the motel, discussing the tower signaler and wondering to whom he was sending a message. It may, or, it may or may not have anything to do with the case I'm trying to solve, Nancy remarked. If it has, said Ned, the receiver might be Mr. Seaman or that other man. Nancy nodded and led the way into the motel lobby, where they found Bess and George talking excitedly with Dave Evans and Bert Edelton. She introduced Ned to Mrs. Thompson. Excuse me who in turn showed him the room where the three boys would sleep. 
40 minutes later, the young people, in attractive suits and dresses, met in the lobby and discussed where to have dinner. Mrs. Thompson suggested they have dancing and the music is really excellent. That's the place for taking a few dance steps. What a dork. Nancy and her friends decided to try the spot and set off in Ned's car. Needs on your convertible, he asked Nancy, who sat in front beside him. Not one, we hike and taxi, but getting to the castle hasn't been on our schedule. Let's go right after church tomorrow. I'm at your service, said Ned. I'm still trying to remember how her convertible got stolen. When did that happen? Can somebody refresh me? I completely forgot that part. Why didn't she have her car? I remember thinking it was stolen when she went to that pick. Is that, is that right? I don't know. The restaurant building proved to be a large modern concrete structure with geometric designs painted on it in flamboyant colors. Hmm. I don't know how I feel about that. When I heard modern concrete, I was like, no, I don't like that. But geometric designs in flamboyant colors, I can go for that. Sounds kind of Memphis design, 80s like or Art Deco kind of. Anyway, I digress. The interior decor was ultra fashionable and a band was already playing a lively tune. Now I have to see when this was written, I'm sorry, just because of the restaurant description. I forgot, 1963. It's, it's nice, it's a nice building, I can tell. It looks like a sophisticated place in New York City. Ned remarked in surprise. Bess tossed her head. What makes you think Moonstone Valley isn't up to date? The three boys were puzzled and Dave asked, Moonstone Valley? Oh, somebody changed its name, Bess explained. It's now called Deep, Ra Deep Rover Valley. Deep River Valley, but I think Moonstone is a lot more romantic. Bess is always right. After the three couples were seated at a table, Bess continued. Speaking of Moonstones, did you know Nancy received a beautiful one as a gift? Bess looked directly at Ned Nickerson. <laughs> no, she didn't tell me, he answered. There was nothing in the way he said it to indicate that he was the donor. It's very mysterious, Bess went on. There wasn't any card with the gift, just a warning note. A warning, Ned repeated. What kind? Bess declared that she would not tell him another word until he confessed he had played the joke. Ned denied this vigorously. Honestly, I didn't send the moonstone, he declared, but I'd certainly like to know who did. Tell me about this warning. The whole story was told and the boys agreed it was mysterious. None of them thought it was funny, rather something to be taken quite seriously. The boys have their heads on straight. Bess is a bit flighty, but I love her. I suppose you figure there's some connection between your Moonstone and Moonstone Valley, Bert said. If there is, it eludes me completely, Nancy answered. But if the sender had a joke in mind or a warning, why didn't he send a cheap stone? This is one of the most beautiful Moonstones I've ever seen. I'll show it to you. She took it from her evening purse. Wow, what a gift. Bert exclaimed. As a waiter came to their table, the three couples turned their attention to dinner and dancing. They spent several hours at the attractive restaurant, then left. It's too early to go directly home, said Ned. How about renting a speedboat, if we can, and taking a cruise on the river? Yes, Ned, I am with you on that. Is Ned the greatest or what? I love Ned. I need a Ned. Bess looked up at the sky. What a beautiful moon, she exclaimed. 
It would be absolutely heavenly on the water. Let's do it. I think Bess and Ned belong together. Am I right? Bess and Ned. There you go. Nancy directed Ned to a dock where she thought boats could be rented at night. They found one that gave 24 hour service. Ned worked and went inside to make inquiries. Presently he returned and said they would take a sleek motor boat named the Water Witch. That sounds a bit dangerous and sinister. Which water? Dave punned, whereupon whereupon Bert pretended to throw him into the river. The six young people climbed in and Ned took the wheel. Illustration pages. Woo, water witch. I'm looking at the water witch right now. This is a good illustration, I'll show it to you. If you want to see Mr. Wheeler's wrecked boat, it's across the river and down a short distance, said Nancy. Ned followed her directions and had just turned downstream when they all became aware of a speedboat coming toward them. It was headed directly for their boat. At once, Ned turned his craft. The approaching boats still came at them as if drawn by a magnet. Ned sounded his horn. The other, sorry, I'm getting too excited. I'm getting really excited. The other pilot paid no attention. Is that fellow loco? Bert asked worriedly. Ned dodged his way. Ned dodged this way and that to get out of the path of the oncoming craft. It's going to hit us, Bess screamed. Just before the strange boat reached them, its pilot, now oh, there's a baby crying outside. Shut up, baby. Always when we're at an exciting part. It's going to hit us, Bess screamed. Just before the strange boat reached them, its pilot dived into the water. Ned swerved in a desperate attempt to avoid both the speedboat and the swimmer. His effort was successful. Good work, said George. Everyone looked to see what had become of the pilot who had jumped overboard. I see him, Nancy cried out. He's swimming toward the shore. Time to show you the picture. We see the water witch and this boat coming towards them with this menacing looking man. See, there's the guy in, in the boat. And there's, I can't see. Can you see? There's Ned and the Nedlings and Bess and George and Nancy. And the moon in the back. That's a really good illustration. I like that. I love the double page illustrations. Very nice, very nice. I guess he's safe, said Ned. Now we'd better chase that speedboat and try to stop it before it does any damage. The race was on. Ned gave his own craft full power and little by little inched up on the pilotless boat. I'll jump across, Bert offered, and made a flying leap. He took the wheel, which he found responded well. There's nothing the matter with this steering mechanism. That fellow intended to hit us for sure. He invited George to hop in beside him and asked, Now where do we go? I suppose we should take the boat back with us to the dock and explain what happened, said Nancy. But I'd like to see that castle first, said Ned. Is that the building over there? I'm getting distracted by bangs and stuff. You probably can't hear it. Babies wailing and bangy sounds. My voice is kind of like, one thing I hate is vocal fry, but I'm kind of getting it because I'm tired or whatever. You know, vocal fry? How's uh, it go? It's very bad for the vocal cords. Um, I'd like to see that castle first, said Ned. Is that the building over there? Yes. The two speedboats headed for the rickety dock, which evidently had been used by the former tenants of the castle. 
Suddenly, Nancy exclaimed, I saw a light moving in the castle. Somebody's in the hallway, hold on. I'll take a little break, okay? This is a pretty exciting chapter. I This is becoming one of my favorite books. I had, as I say over and over again, I had read the first part of it, but I hadn't finished the whole thing. I was reading it on one of those e-reader things, which I despise. And I'm really enjoying it. Um, here's Perino. <laughs> here's little Perino. How are you enjoying the book? Huh? It's pretty good. There's no mice in it, but it's pretty good. Anyway, are there have there been any animals in this book yet? Um, do we have any dog encounters? I'm only. I'm sorry, it's Perino talking. Nancy's only reading um, two books at once right now. She's reading this. Oh my God, that was loud. Holy shit. Pardon my Welsh. You you definitely heard that bang. Scared my little Perino. <laughs> um, have there been any animals in this book? I don't think so. Um, were there any yet in The Hidden Staircase? I don't think so. Try not to get the two mixed up. Okay. That was a very loud bang. That hurt our little mouse ears. My landlord's in the hall. So we'll just take a little breaky break. Um, I think this is the last. Yeah. I'm almost finished the chapter. Let me check the chat. I think only, I cannot hear the birds. I like hearing the birds, but much better than hearing bangs and stuff. I'm gonna hide the chat for now. I love my landlord, he's really great, but this is a very old and loud building. Bye. Um, I saw, oh yeah, Nancy exclaimed, I saw a light moving in the castle. I did too, Ned agreed. That man with whiskers must be there, Bess suggested. <laughs> George gave a great sigh. There's only one way to find out. Why don't we tie up here and you boys can investigate? <laughs> I was just looking at that sentence quickly at first and I thought I said, why don't we tie up the boys and then go investigate? <laughs> Sorry. She was just about to get out of the stranger's speedboat when the group heard a shrill whistle. They turned. Coming at a fast clip was a police launch. A large searchlight pinpointed, pinpointed the water witch and the other craft. The young people in both boats stayed in their seats. In a few seconds, the launch pulled up alongside and stopped. <gasps> now we've got police intervention. Oh my goodness. The chief officer leaned over the railing and said, so the ones who stole the boat. Nancy and her friends were dumbfounded doesn't dumbfounded have a, a B in it usually? It doesn't here. She protested firmly that they had not stolen the boat and told exactly what had happened. Sorry, miss, but that sounds as if you're just trying to shift the blame onto somebody else. It's the truth, Nancy insisted, and the others backed up her story. Well, you can tell them down at headquarters, the officer said. To Bert and George, he added, Get out and come aboard the launch. Angry but obedient. That's that's what you do when you... Oh my God. Holy shit. I don't know, but that's, that's like much too loud. Whatever that banging is. That is in, incensing me. That is not right. 
I will complain about that. Thank you very much. I will be a Karen about that bang. Well, you can tell them down at headquarters, the officer said. To Bert and George, he added, get out and come aboard the launch. Angry but obedient, the pair climbed into the police launch. Good thing we're almost finished the chapter, huh? Angry but obedient. We will get through this sentence, believe me. Angry but obedient, the pair climbed into the police launch. Another officer jumped aboard the stolen speedboat and sat down behind the wheel. All set? The chief officer asked him. Yes, sir. The commander of the launch now turned to Ned and ordered. You all come along with us too. End of chapter 12. You've seen me a little bit angry now. <laughs> you could, that's like a saw or something, I guess. I don't know. I mean, they're making good um, improvements in the building. The door doesn't slam anymore, the front door the red devil door. It's been repainted in its signature devil red, but at least it doesn't slam anymore. So that was chapter 12. It was very exciting. It got a little annoying at the end. You hear that. Tell me you hear that. Thank you. Thank you, Jada. Everything's going well. Um, so far, I haven't had like any, I know as I keep reminding myself, the chemotherapy and the side effects are cumulative as I go on with the treatment, but so far I'm feeling pretty good. I felt tired. I was tired and weak to begin with before I started. So it's not like I was feeling 100% awesome and like, then all of a sudden, you know, that would have been worse. I feel, I was already feeling like, bleh, so it's not such a big change, but I definitely feel more, you know. Anyway, okay, I think that's it for now. I hope you guys were able to enjoy the chapter and I didn't get too angry at the end. I don't like being angry, but. You know, it's loud in here sometimes. Right? Little Perino makes me happy and my, my knitting and all that. Um, yes. Didn't I show this guy? I showed this guy in my last live. Or girl. I think it's going to be a girl. I don't know. Because I have things to add on. Like I'm going to give her a, a flower and do more little floofy feathers and whatnot. Always, I always like to add on little things, little accessories and whatnot. So um, I guess we're gonna go see if our Perry Como albums are downloading. And I gotta go to the store and get some vegetables. Cause all I've eaten today is a salad. I, I stayed in bed for a long time. Who doesn't love cute little animals? Thank you, thank you, Jada. You're so sweet, big hugs to you. All right, I'll see you guys later. Thanks, thanks for all your encouragement and prayers and stuff. I really appreciate it. Bye, have a great weekend.